Hey builders, today we're here to empower you with the unbeatable combination of BuildShip and Google Sheets. This is part of a new series of videos highlighting the Google Workspace nodes in BuildShip. We're putting Google Sheets in the spotlight today. We're going to learn how to automate your sheets and optimize your workflows like you never thought possible. Get ready for some tips and tricks that will take your Google Sheets game to the next level. Let's plunge into the world of automation with BuildShip and Google Workspace. Let's start a new workspace and take a look at the pre-built nodes that BuildShip have for Google Sheets. There are four nodes available. A node to add a row, you can do a batch update on a sheet, create a new sheet, or get a sheet. Let's start by creating a sheet. Now, if you've used BuildShip for a while, you'll notice something different here. There's a pre-built authentication layer built into these nodes. You just click authenticate, log into your Google account, and the node is ready to go. Often it's helpful to start by looking at this information tab. This gives us lots of information about what the node is expecting to receive from us. With the Google Sheet node, it uses something called RPC transcoding syntax. Now, if you know what that is, you'll know about it. But if you don't, don't worry. It's fairly easy to learn. Let's start by inputting this example that BuildShip have given us. Now, one thing to remember about the authentication nodes is that you have to go into the node editor and run a test from there. Here we have our successful test with a spreadsheet ID and all of the data that's come through from our spreadsheet. What if we want to have a look at it in Google Sheets? Well, here at the bottom, we have a spreadsheet URL, which will take us directly to the sheet. So it's a fairly simple example of a Google Sheet with a heading of world COVID data and 18 rows down and 12 rows across. And there's also some column and row freezing. So let's change this to be something a bit more us. Hmm, that's better. If we get this sheet back in BuildShip, you'll be able to see the syntax that it comes back in as. Let's head back to BuildShip and replace our create sheet with a get sheet node. We add in our spreadsheet ID and run a test. Great. Here's our top BuildShip features spreadsheet coming back with all of its data. What if we wanted to update a row in this sheet? That calls for our add row node. We can add in our spreadsheet ID. We need to make sure we add in our sheet name, which comes from the bottom tab in your Google Sheet. And BuildChip have helpfully given us a sample input. The cell number is the first cell of the row you want to add new data to. Say we wanted to add another feature. Well, the first cell would be A10. And our data is simply the new values we're adding into the row. And BuildChip have given us an example input here. Let's add that in as a new feature. So we'll go up here and we'll test our node and we've got a successfully updated sheet. Let's go and have a look. And there you have it, two cells successfully updated. The final node in BuildShip's Google Sheet Arsenal is a batch update node. The purpose of it is to batch update values in a Google Sheet. The batch update node behaves very similar to the add row node, but it's supercharged. You add in your spreadsheet ID, value around how the data should be interpreted, the data itself, Again, in gRPC transcoding syntax, if the response you get should include the values that have been updated, how the response should be rendered, and how dates, times, and durations in the response should be rendered. So there you have it, BuildShip and Google Sheets. Just one of the many ways that BuildShip and Google Workspace can work together. Let us know how you're using Google Workspace. And if you've got any questions, drop them in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Happy build shipping.